All right, Data Rockstars, it is March Madness. It is that time of the year. I am super excited to see the final four teams go to New Orleans and see who can win. We have got Kansas Jayhawks, the number one all-time winning this basketball team in the entire country, just recently surpassing Kentucky's record against the Villanova Wildcats, as well as an amazing historical matchup between North Carolina and the Duke Blue Devils, which is the first time meeting in the tournament, even though they've had incredible success over decades. But we are here to look at search interest and to see what people are searching for over the past year for these teams in Google Trends and bring that into Tableau and look at the search interest, which is a new term, which really means the relative comparison from zero to 100 in popularity of those terms. It does not mean the number of actual searches. So be sure you know exactly what you're talking about when you're describing what Google is offering you with this amazing data. And then we will also look at mapping which states have more interest than the others. And you can extrapolate that to other things with countries and cities and metro areas and things like that. So let's get started. Let's shrink me down so you can see the screen and we are in Google Trends. So very cool. You can add these terms one at a time. I have four there. You can use the plus sign to add more. We have the United States. Of course, you can click anything, but NCAA basketball probably has a little bit of a limited uh, reach, but who knows? Maybe there's some uh, fan favorite teams for those players that are going to the NBA and people are excited to watch from other places. Uh, around the world, but we are going to stick with the U.S. since that's where um, the teams are located and look at the past 12 months, all categories and web search, noting that you can also see what people are searching for on YouTube. Maybe they're searching for this channel. Maybe not. And you can also try some other options as well, like a news and image, but we are just going with the basics. This is interest over time. You can hover over and click this question mark and it will tell you that definition you should save that and put that in your graph very small and maybe you know making it a little more brief but this does describe it so if you are accidentally summing up your graph and you have 200 as the value for the search interest that does not make sense that would be like having a 90 percent on an assignment in a class and a 95 and making that 185 percent for your grade Sadly, that is not how it works. So you need to do an average in that case, and we'll get to that when we're in Tableau. But here, all we need is that CSV file. Each one of these sections has their own with that down arrow and the underscore below it. And we will also look at this subregion. You can do them individually by team, but we're gonna bring it into Tableau all together in just two files and take a look there. So let's download that CSV got multi timeline is the name of that for interest over time it's going to pop up in excel and that will show up like this of course we want to clean up our data before we bring it into tableau and we highlight those first two rows you can do it like that and then right click or command click and delete and there you go now we just have the regular data there and we're going to save that as let's just call it search interest NCAA in this case you can call it whatever you want for yours and CSV you can do in Excel as well whatever works for you and we can X out of that and open up Tableau so Tableau desktop is loading and we can do a file new or actually let's just go to connect to a file and more CSV is that option on the more not the Excel file for the first one search interest NCAA is what we were looking for for this and here we go so here's our data and you'll notice a couple things real quick let's make me a little bit bigger <laughs> so as you can see our data is in four different columns and we're gonna actually change that so it's only in one so we can graph things a little bit more easily uh, but we do have date coming in as a date so that looks good we have a number for the kansas jayhawks which is great but then we have a problem so we have abc it thinks it's a text string for north carolina and villanova but that's because it thinks that little less than sign is text so that's not what we're looking for. That is also a number. We're going to change that to number whole. It's not a decimal because it's a whole number between one and a hundred and do the same thing there as well. It will change those less than ones to null. That's okay. That's less than one on a scale of 
uh, you know, zero to hundred. So I don't know how much value that it really adds graphing that. So we're going to keep that as number. If you didn't do that, when you popped over here to sheet one, you would see um, these four have, might have those two that were incorrect up here and as dimensions and text strings. And you would have to right click on them, change it to a number, right click on them, change it to a measure. So uh, the extra steps aren't really necessary, but we have one more thing to do now that we're here. So something that we can do is click in that area at the top of that first column for these measures of search interest, and then click shift on your keyboard, and then click that last one to highlight all of these columns. And then you can use that down arrow and click pivot. So now we have them combined in a different way. So instead of having it in individual columns, we have all of the values in one uh, column and all of the uh, categories, the dimensions, the teams in this case, or search terms uh, in this one. So that allows us to graph by team really easily without having to pull in four each time. And there's some graphs where if you pull in all four, it doesn't really work like that. And so to make it more easy to work with for our purposes, for all four teams over time and certain different graphs uh, that will work, we wanna do it this way and it's a good skill for a lot of other times. Um, this will be faster to use, if not the only way to graph certain things. We do have non-human sounding names though, and I do not like non-human sounding names. They're not very helpful, I don't think anyone in the general population would have any idea what pivot field names means and even in this you know class or university so let's just call this in basketball teams um and you could put search terms so search terms would be totally fine for this especially since you're going to be explaining it and for this this is search interest is the value that we're displaying pivot field values again not cool so here we go, we can pop over to search sheet one and name that search uh, term interest or search interest. Just let's kick it off and get rid of that sheet one stuff. We don't wanna see any of that anyway. And now we have basketball teams that we can put on color. We can drop in week to the columns and we're gonna do exact date to make it uh, all of the individual variations. You can make it you know week or month to look at it over time and just see kind of a, a less a detailed view, but we're gonna drop in search interest there. And remember I said, you do not want something over a hundred. Right now we have a week, I think if we change it to a month, it might double count it. Yep, there you go. So you do not want search term interest of 240, does not make sense. So what we can do for that is change it to average. You know, and again, it depends on what you want to display. If you really want to see the nuances of the data uh, and everything, then you could change that instead of month to be exact date. And then you got all these little, you know, crooked teeth, as they would say, kind of like the crooked teeth of the skyscrapers from an excellent Death Cab for Cutie song. But we have these up and downs or like we just had there in um, month. That kind of gives you a little bit more of an idea of the overall trend. Um, but as usual at the you know mid or early to a month if the month isn't complete your date at the end will probably take a nosedive if it's april 2nd or something like that but it's not quite there to the ncaa tournament final it is still march 28th today so we are looking good for march on the month uh as far as that so one other thing we can do besides the pivot is notice it has that united states there so we do actually want to bring that probably into the title. And that's one thing I like to do, bring things up to the title. Anytime you see something duplicated, then why am I writing United States four times? That's a lot for my audience to have cognitive overload. It looks messy on the screen. And we can just change this to United States and make that, uh, let's put it on the second line there, probably make it smaller. Very cool. All right. And then month of week, nobody talks like that. Double click that, delete it off the axis title, X that out, and you're good to go for that part. But there was one more thing that I was alluding to, and you can take basketball teams, right click on that, transform, like the transformers, you know, Bumblebee and whatnot, custom split. And as you'll see, that colon is the thing that separates the name of the team 
from that geographic region that we ran this for. That is a colon and as a separator. This is also similar to Excel's text to columns feature. You can split off the first two columns, click OK. <clears throat> and we're going to use split one as the color. And now that region stuff is gone from up here. Although remember to edit the title of that axis and remove that split one thing that is also not human friendly. So there we go. We have a much better graph and we are ready to try our next graph after this. And we need to go back to uh, Chrome and find out how we could get there from Tableau and go down to the breakdown by subregion. All right. So we have the Jayhawks, Tar Heels, Wildcats, and Blue Devils. Yeah, okay, so, you know, there's the uh, Jayhawks versus the Tar Heels. See the comparison. Villanova, obviously very strong in the Upper East. And same probably with Duke with a little more strength than the a little bit further south spot than that compared to uh, the Jayhawks, uh, which are strong pretty much everyone. But... Anyway, let's get that file and let's get going to see how it goes. Uh, one thing you can check out there, it is subregion now. You can change that to metro area. Uh, that's also pretty cool to see. It gets it a little bit more granular than state, especially if you have uh, Kansas and Kansas City, which has a lot of uh, difference on the Kansas City side because Missouri uh, is not that far from Kansas City and where there might be a different county that would be more or less or the Jayhawks could be interesting uh, somewhere around here. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, so we have a GeoMap, uh, and that's this compared breakdown by um, metro or subregion. So I'm going to suggest subregion to start. I think that's what I pulled. And there are these individual sections as well. But let's go with that and click that subregion again, GeoMap 4. Double click and pop it up into Excel, and we are rocking. And there you go. So same thing, clean off those first two rows. We know it's all categories. That's not helpful. I'm going to save this again, and we're going to call it uh, search geo data. And there you go. That was the tab name, and I don't think I saved it. Is that? No, I did. Okay, cool. Replace, close, and ready to rock in Tableau. And because we already have data in here, the way we add data is data add new data source. It is not to go here and click uh, connect to data because that would join it together. Um, although you could do a join based on the team name if we make it match up and they are exactly the same. Um, but for now, we'll just leave them as uh, unconnected. Do data new data source and more for the search geodata CSV file, and we've got that coming up. So similarly to before, we have the region. Uh, although it's coming in as ABC, we can go here. It is a string. It is still an ABC text string. It did not figure out that those were states. So there should be an option for states or provinces. Hello, Canada and other countries. Shout out to Ontario. Uh, there we go. So now you have the little globe and we have these as well. Same thing happened before. These are ABCs. We need to change them to whole numbers, whole numbers. And now you can do that same thing. And I went from right to left. It doesn't matter if you go right to left, left to right, click in that column, shift, click in the last column. They're all highlighted, right click and pivot. And so now you have the region the team and the value, all very graphable. So let's see if we can do the, oh yeah, if we forgot to rename it, so bad Taylor. All right, basketball team. And let's go back to Google Trends so we can get our little definition to, so <laughs> percentage of searches. So this one's a little bit different than last one. Last one was search interest. This is percentage of searches. So let's go here, call this percentage 
of searches by state. All right, so to wrap this up, we're going to take that region, which is a geography, and we're going to take that and drag and drop it onto detail. So since Tableau already knows it's that geography, it can figure out how that latitude and longitude is correlated to those states since that doesn't change and it's in their database. It's just giving us dots, though, because we're not graphing anything yet. So we need to take that uh, percentage of searches, which is a number, drop that onto color, maybe. And right now we don't have... It's everyone together, so it's 100%. So we need a basketball team, uh, and we can drop that here. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. And uh, remember, we did right-click, transform, custom splits, colon, first two columns, OK. And instead of basketball team, I can do split one uh, there. So we've got the basketball team on the left that you can sort of see, hide that field label for columns. Now at a quick glance, we can see everything there. You will notice up there, there's also that map option uh, as well. That's another way to get to it through the show me tab. It can be a little tricky, but that thing where you drop the region onto the detail is usually the best way to start. Sometimes it's hard to find your way into that, just navigating the UI and everything and starting to drop variables on there as well. And then remember, instead of sum of searches, we want to make sure it's average. Should be okay in this level of data, but just in case. And now you can see the quick difference between Kansas and that worldwide, except for a little bit of the, or countrywide, except for a little bit of the East Coast, and then the stronger East Coast followings of those teams, especially looks like Duke up there, but maybe a battle for Alaska. Hmm. Interesting. And the data, so data to explore. We do want to change those colors and make them somewhat different, at least than the default. I don't know what we're going to go with, but let's do that. And of course, you can use labels. So you could uh, control click that and add it to the label. You can, of course, just show the minimum and maximum, maybe just the maximum there. And that format is terrible. It's got way too many decimals there. Uh, so you can uh, take that and right click on the number and you want to look at pane and everything. So this, this is the pane in the window versus the axis. Hopefully this is the right one and we could change it to custom number and reduce the decimals. Um, you probably want one decimal or maybe let's see a standard will let it cut off some of them. There you go. So this is obviously very tiny because we have all of the teams. So I'm going to right click on that, duplicate it, and maybe just keep uh, Kansas and North Carolina doing shifts to highlight both of those and keep only. And so now we just have those two zoomed in. So that looks a lot better for this matchup. And you could, of course, create as many matchups as you want. And it'd be really fun if you you know, set up the colors for the teams and everything else like that so it matches. But comparatively, it looks like the Jayhawks are doing better in search over the last year. But I don't know. You should definitely look into that. So that's a starting point to the exploration. And, you know, maybe that doesn't pass the sniff test. North Carolina is super popular in the entire country, have been for decades. Roy Williams, the coach, is amazing. So I'm not too sure about that. So I would investigate that a little bit further. But this is how we make a map. This is how you pull in that Tableau data and you should be good to go. You don't always have to graph every single one of them. You could just have the Jayhawks there if you want and go all the way down to a single graph to the single country. Again, you can add the names of things to the labels as well. All of that is customizable up here. You can make it match the mark color as well. It's a little bit harder from accessibility if they are close like that, but it does look kind of neat as well. So depending on your purposes and who it's for and where you are publishing it, that is something to do. And remember, you can also change your typefaces and change the size of that as well. Those are tiny little uh, numbers, so go for it. All right, well, thanks everyone. And we will see you next time on Thinkermetrics. All right, one or two more things that I forgot. We do want that one to look more like a 100%. So we can right click on that search uh, text format. And up here, you can change that. It was, you know, standard number, something like that. Of course, you can choose percent and with zero decimal places because we don't need to go that crazy in this case. So definitely check that out for percentage. That is a very human friendly way to look at things. 
and you can see, hey, look, well, not a lot of Kansas fans in North Carolina. That makes a lot of sense, especially with the history of the coaches. But there you go. Also, you can format these things as well to match your team colors, a little red and blue there. So you can right click and format that and change the shading there to little Kansas or Kentucky blue. They both have that for themselves. And we mostly should be good to go. Other than that, there is maybe on the map, you will find the zooming in features up here. It is not quite as friendly as the touch screen sort of Google Maps that I'm used to. So you may have to click these options uh, and then uh, zoom in and try to find the right center for where you want to show uh, your data and then click outside of it and the 100 will pop back up for that as well. You can choose these things up here in the map menu. There are a lot of different things to do. We'll be doing more of that in the coming things, but there are map layers and you can choose not to have different things, not to have bases and state lines and you can even take the state names off it or if you don't need the United States there, maybe you know it's the United States and do not need that there so you can add all sorts of different things or subtract them and you can change the style as well i'm a dark mode type of person so you can put the dark mode on that as well and you can even kind of uh, wash it out a little bit there too so lots of different things you can check out more to come with maps but wanted to make sure you had a few things here to make it look really good to the questions that you haven't asked more numbers don't mean better sometimes they just slow the task but you can predict the future if you look into the past with the ratio you'll move towards your goals chasing maximum